very quickly, my colleagues have made repeated reference to some secret proceedings in some secret star chamber. Uh, this is apparently what they call depositions. I remind my colleagues that when they were in the majority, they conducted depositions, but they were different in this respect. In the depositions we conduct in the Intelligence Committee, over 100 members were able to participate. That's how secret they were. We revealed all of the transcripts of those depositions. The repetition of this falsehood does not make it true. It only makes the falsehood that much more deliberate. With that, I am pleased to recognize the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Mosh, for two minutes. Gentlemen's recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in support of these articles of impeachment. I come to this floor not as a Democrat, not as a Republican, but as an American who cares deeply about the Constitution, the rule of law, and the rights of the people. Under our system of government, impeachment is not about policy disagreements or ineffective governance, nor is it about criminality based on statutes that did not exist at the time our Constitution was written. Impeachment is about maintaining the integrity of the office of the presidency and ensuring that executive power is directed toward proper ends in accordance with the law. The Constitution grants the House the sole power of impeachment and the Senate the sole power to try all impeachments. We in the House are empowered to charge impeachable conduct. The Constitution describes such conduct as high crimes and misdemeanors but it, because it pertains to high office and relates to the misuse of that office. We need not rely on any other branch or body to endorse our determinations. We have the sole power of impeachment. In Federalist No. 65, Alexand Alexander Hamilton wrote that high crimes and misdemeanors, quote, are those offenses which proceed from the misconduct of public men, or in other words, from the abuse or violation of some public trust. They are of a nature which may, with peculiar propriety, be denominated political as they relate chiefly to injuries done immediately to the society itself, end quote. President Donald J. Trump has abused and violated the public trust by using his high office to solicit the aid of a foreign power, not for the benefit of the United States of America, but instead for his personal and political gain. His actions reflect precisely the type of conduct the framers of the Constitution intended to remedy through the power of impeachment, and it is our duty to impeach him. I yield back. Gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Undoubtedly, the House Resolution 660 does not matter to the majority, and particularly the manager of this bill, because the Inspector General I see, his transcript has not been released. There's not been documents transferred that were supposed to be transferred to the White House, and we're still not sure we got everything we're supposed to get in Judiciary Committee. I guess when you want to be transparent and open, you hold it in a skiff and do whatever you want. With that, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Stubbe. Gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This impeachment charade did not start with a whistleblower complaint. The campaign to impeach a duly elected president and overturn the will of 63 million Americans started 19 minutes after the president took the oath of office. 19 minutes after the inauguration, the Washington Post published a story headline, the campaign to impeach President Trump has begun. The first day of this Congress on day one, a Democratic member of my class called for the impeachment of the president long before the call to the Ukraine. Then it was the Russia collusion hoax, then obstruction of justice, then bribery, then quid pro quo, none of which are included in these articles before us today. The first article of impeachment crafted as a fiction is not an enumerated basis in the Constitution for impeachment. The Democratic majority would have you believe that abuse of power is a high crime or misdemeanor. It's not. It's an opinion. It's not even a crime that can be charged in a court of law. Unlike Presidents Nixon and Clinton who were tried for actual crimes, this president is being impeached on vague phrases that appear nowhere in our Constitution. The second article, obstruction of Congress, again, doesn't exist in the Constitution as a basis for impeachment and is attempting to impeach a duly elected president for asserting constitutionally based privileges that have been asserted on a bipartisan basis by administrations of both political parties throughout our nation's history. This House is impeaching a president over a phone call to another world leader, a few lines in a phone transcript that have been completely and utterly misrepresented by the majority. The process that ensued was anything but open, transparent, bipartisan, or, or equitable, abandoning all past historical due process afforded the minority and the president. The Democrats ran a partisan investigation, refusing the rights of the minority, refusing the ability for the President's counsel to call witnesses, refusing to allow the President's counsel to cross-examine fact witnesses, 
and refusing a minority he hearing day, just to name a few. The majority waves around a report drafted that, they can talk, that the Democratic staff concocted as a matter of fact. When they needed backup for their approach, they paraded out liberal professors with animus against the president who gave them license to impeach the president for any reason they wish. House Democrats are making themselves kings in a manner far worse and more obvious than what they are accusing the president of doing. The only abuse of power here is the Democratic-led Congress. I yield back.